Hello, hello, how are you? This is Nancy, the Disorderly Stitcher. It is Friday, May, or May, don't I wish. Excuse me, March 3rd, uh, episode 22, threads, fabrics, charts, and M&Ms. I'll explain that in a minute. So I hope everyone's doing well. Um, we actually had a tiny little bit of snow today, nothing major, just enough to, you know, put some white on the ground. It's not going to stick around. It's not going to do anything. Uh, I'm hoping that we make it the next couple of weeks and hopefully we don't burn a snow day. So yeah, it's, you know, crazy, crazy weather. So I hope everybody is well and uh, your lives are good and they're going in the positive direction. Um, if not, I hope that whatever obstacles you're experiencing are easy to overcome. You know, don't be afraid to reach out for help when you need it. So, yes. So not much really is happening. Um, I have been stitching or trying to stitch. Um, I find that when I talk to people online, either, you know, through Facebook Messenger or a Zoom stitch group thing, I get a lot more done. I'm also letting myself have time to stitch, which is awesome. And I hate to say it, but I'm doing more stitching than I am quilting, which is a good and bad thing. It's easier for me to come home and stitch than it is to come home and think about sitting here and working on quilt blocks. I don't know why. Um, but I have done some stitching. I have worked on my whip go. I have made a couple of project bags and, um, I love making project bags. It's weird. Don't ask me why, but it's weird, but I love making them and it's like, okay, I have all these things I want to stitch. So that means I need a bag for each one. Right? Right. So let's see. Yes. And I'm actually trying to have an agenda for these, these little, uh, videos, believe it or not. Somebody accused me of getting too orderly and that's not a good thing, but, um, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm trying to do a little bit of both be disorderly and orderly at the same time. So here we go. Um, so uh, if you're not familiar with Chris, the camping stitcher, she is quite the enabler and she's also quite the, um, motivator. She, um, has started, we started a, uh, get together on zoom through her channel. Um, and, and through our Facebook groups, uh, she's the camping stitcher and I'm the disorderly stitcher. And, uh, we have, uh, spotlight on a designer stitch evenings on zoom. So the other day we had one for hands across the sea and you know, it's not that you have to work on a hands across the sea. You could work on anything you wanted to. Um, you know, Jess, the Sweetwater stitcher was folding her laundry when she got there, which is okay. You know, laundry has to be folded. So, um, yeah. Uh, the next one, I'm not sure if it's either going to be Plum Street or Teresa Kogut. I don't know if it's been decided, but yeah, it's a lot of fun. And it, it, it sounds weird. You know, you're not sitting in a room with other people stitching, but you're still communicating while you stitch. And it's always, it's always a lot of fun. So if you would care to join either of us, um, go into Facebook and you could join our groups. As I said, she is the camping stitcher and I am the disorderly stitcher. Please make sure, um, I know on my Facebook group, I have questions you need to answer. Please do that. I would greatly appreciate it. Um, just so I know that you know what cross stitch is all about. Uh, I have a question about quilting there. If you're not a quilter, that's okay. Just tell me that and, um, we'll be good to go. All right. Great. So, you know, as usual, I probably have more haul than I do whips, but that's the nature of the beast during the school year. So I'm going to start with whips. Um, one of my whip go calls for March is to work on a Plum Street chart. 
I didn't, I didn't specifically, you know, write down which one I wanted. So I just grabbed one. Now, a couple years ago, my husband and I took a weekend. In fact, I think it was Veterans Day weekend. And we went down into Virginia and um, I went to a shop in Waynesboro, Virginia. I think it's Cross Stitch Station. And this was when I first got back into Cross Stitch. And one of the first things I picked up, because this is about when it came out, was the Gather In. And I just fell in love with the barn and the pumpkins. And of course, being the history geek that I am, the flag. All right. It calls for a combination of Weeks Dye Works, excuse me, Weeks Dye Works and DMC. And the fabric this is stitched on is graham cracker. Now, I don't think that I got graham cracker. And honestly, I can't be sure because what was in the bag with the chart is not labeled. But I was sure I got 36 count. Well, when I went to count it, it was only 28. So I was like, well, that's not going to work. So I had purchased three fat quarters of, of Fox and Rabbit. One was Saltbush, one was um, Mayflower, and there was another one. And I thought, well, the fabric in the bag is kind of, you know, a darkish, grayish, taupey, putty color. Why not use the Saltbush? So I started, and here it is, but the one color that makes up the, the bigger part of the barn is Arrowhead, okay? I started using it and it like blended right into the fabric. And so I was talking to Chris, the camping stitcher last night and you know, she's like, well, why you know, we were, we were, she was trying to help me. I finally just gave up and I started to put whitewash into those little stars. Now, of course, white's going to pop on anything, but I really don't want that barn to be white, white. So... I think what I'm going to do is just take some of this arrowhead and stitch somewhere on this fabric, a bunch of stitches together to see how it works. Cause usually when you get a bunch of st stitches together, it shows up better. It pops a little bit more. So, um, we're going to see about that. My other concern is, um, the gray for the front of the barn it's a tin roof so i don't know I, I there's a part of me that wants to change the fabric but i don't know if i want to tear this out because i don't want to just you know i don't want to just throw away fox and rabbit fabric that's not going to happen so it's still in consideration i guess i don't know so we'll have to see, but like I said, I love it. You know, I love this pattern. So there's the back. I don't know if any of you are back people. So we'll see. We shall see. So that's um, my one whip go. My other whip go. I don't remember. I'll have to think about that. So another one I've been working on, of course, is my temperature tree. And we just finished February. Now, I don't know, excuse me for rattling. I don't know what happened when I first started to do the tree trunk, but somewhere along the line, um, some of my branches got too close together. So I had to sort of fudge February. So, um, you know, she gives you the design for 29 days in February. So I had to, um, use that 29th day as February 28th because I had to move some leaves 
and I had to make up stru the structure of some of my leaves simply because there was no space to have space. Does that make sense? So I'm hoping that things will get better as I go into March and April, um, that I paid a little more attention to where these branches are. But anyway, with that being said, here we go. So you can see the only really cold day that we had in February is right here. And that was February 4th or thereabouts without really sitting there and counting. But check these out. There's a really, really warm day. And there's another really warm day and another semi-warm day where we got up into the low 70s. Crazy town. So, you know, if nothing else, this is going to be a conversation piece when we see how warm January and February actually were. Yes. But we still have time in March. So this little leaf right here, that itty bitty one right there, that's March 1st. Now the reason I had to move these last three February leaves down instead of having another one here for February is because I have to put two March leaves, second and third in this spot. And I wouldn't have had room had I not done that. So I like it. You know, and it's one of those things that I have, I have enough branches. I have March, April, and May done working on June. So, you know, the tree part is done far enough ahead that when I want to, I just go in and I look up the past temperatures and write them down on my handy dandy chart. And there we go. So that's the temperature tree. I also did a very small bit, sorry for that, on um, Hawkorn Hollow. Like I said, it's this is going to be one of those that takes forever. Forever. And I'm sorry, I don't remember what I'm doing everything on. Um... I'm sure I have it written down somewhere, but there we go. I like the snake and the little fish. There's supposed to be some more fish in there, but that's the first block. And this one is the villages of Hawk Run Hollow. Sorry about that. I just flashed the chart at you. So I'm working on this block right there. So I'm excited. I'm excited. I've also ow, stabbed myself with a needle. I've also decided that, you know what, you really need to take those hoops out. So I went back and I took all my hoops out. So yeah. Good idea. Um, I'm going to be doing a lot of twisting and turning because everything that I need is down here on the floor. I wasn't going to lift it up here because my space is limited. And it all just fell on the floor. All right. So the other one I was working on is Antong Ufendel by Hands Across the Sea. If you are unfamiliar with this chart, um, it's a big one. She's a big girl. I just love the border. So again, um, I worked on this the other night while we were chatting and I am working to go around on the border. So hopefully you can see it. Yes. So far, so good. This is 36 count 
Parchment by Roxy Flosco out of Canada. I love the feel of the fabric. It's just, it's cuddly, for lack of a better word. I am using the called for DMC because you know what? DMC looks just as pretty as silk. So, yes. So I've been working on that. That's about all I've been working on. Um, besides school stuff. So I'm going to pull up some haul and things I've kitted. Um, I am working on, or I'm going to kit, I'm going to start soon, Mary Bell. And I made myself a new project bag with my Kentucky fabric. I'm not sure if I showed it to you last time or not, but I love it. I love the gingham. So yes, Mary Bell is going to be worked on and I'm going to do it on 36 count Mayflower by Fox and Rabbit. Very nice. So that's Mary Bell. I'll put that there. I also took the time to make a couple of St. Patrick's Day bags. Um, let me get the one I have kitted out of there. So that's the inside. This is the By Annie vinyl. It comes on a roll. It's 16 inches wide by, I think, 54 inches long, which would be a yard and a half. I love this. Um, it comes on the roll and it has a paper coating or a paper, whatever you want to call it, on one side. So the cool thing is, is that I can sew in to the placket up here, the zipper placket, and then I can just tear the paper off and I don't have to worry about my, about it sticking to my needle or sticking to the um, bed of my machine. Yes. So, you know, once I get this sewn down, I just tear the paper off. So that little bit of paper is still in there, but I love it. I also realized that I had cut my placket strips a half an inch narrower than what the pattern says, but you know what? I like it. There we go. And in that I put... Chris, the camping stitcher just finished hers and I got all motivated. So I am going to start ES spot. I love the reds. And I, I just got this piece of linen from the stash unloading group. It came in the mail and I'm like, you know what? That'll work. But I have no idea what it is. So it just has cat hair on it. What are you going to do? And I chose the more tawny colored linen because of the whitewash. So these are the colors. I love the Turkish red. It's so pretty. And the navy's beautiful too. Navy blue. So, yep, that's the plan for that. So, like I said, that's a hunk of mystery linen. And I believe it's 40 count. And it should be plenty big. So, that's the plan for that one. And I had gotten ES Spot a long time ago. I don't know when or where, but I have it. Um, I got this from the Stash Unloading Group. I've, I've become a Quaker, Quaker, right, Quaker, Quaker file, Quaker. I like Quakers. And so I got this one. It's called An Emblem of Love by Ellen Chester from with, with my needle and it came with the fabric and the threads, the DMC threads. I just love it. 
so I thought I would make it and hang it in our bedroom over the bed someday. I don't know what linen this is. It's a white. Um, it almost looks like an even weave, but it has DMCs in there. I'm good. I believe, uh, I believe I showed you this one last time that I got off of Etsy. I just love that one. Stitches through the years where flowers bloom. So does hope. I love the sheep and the sheep have little like quilt designs in them. So I had to do that one. So that's on the plan. These just came in the mail today. I don't remember ordering them, but okay. I guess I did. This is an Abbey Rose design. It's called the Sisters Sampler. I just thought the colors were pretty. And this is Caroline Suffling from the Scarlet House. Um, you know, the, the red alphabet, that's what sold me. And this one is Jane Plenderleith, 1838. You know, the red house and the, I just love the bands. So there's that. So that one's pretty. They just came today. Nothing like coming home from school and finding yummies in the, the mailbox. I got... The Houses of Hawk Run Hollow. So it looks like this. Yeah, I know. Like, I need another Hawk Run Hollow. And it calls for 40 count pearl barley from Lakeside. Now, for some reason, for some reason, I also bought a piece of 40 count heritage from Picture This Plus. Now, that's sort of green. I don't know why. I don't know what this was for. So I think I need to find out what I bought it for. I seriously don't remember. I, I don't. I think I just, you know, I think sometimes on a, on a Friday night or something, I just start looking at one, two, three stitch and I'm like, oh, click. Um, I got this from the stash unloading group. This is called one nation. Um, there's a, uh, I'm not quite sure what it is like a Biscornu and a, and a scissor fob and, and a little housey thing. But again, the history nerd in me bought that pulled the trigger on that one. I finally got, it was on back order. This one finally came in. Santa stops here. I'm not a big seasonal stitcher. I just love that house though. The the candy house. Yes. Then I think it was two weeks ago, maybe. I was looking at my phone before my grandson started to play basketball that night and a notification came up that there was a new exclusive from Twin Peaks. I have three of their excuses, exclusives and I haven't started one of them, but you know, it's called home of the brave history nerd. And it came with the fabric and it came with the floss and it came with the chart. And I just love it. I love that big old flag. And look at the red, white, and blue sheep. They're so cute. So I got the 28 count even weave. It's sort of a gray. And while I was looking at it, I texted Chris and I said, hey, look at this. Well, by the time she went to order it, the even weave was gone. 
and but she did get the ada anyway she said i can always stitch it on something else i like and i'm like yeah you can yes hold please things fell on the floor oh my goodness that's an empty bag all right so i got my um I got my fabric from Be Stitch Me for the month. It's a half a yard of 36 count flan. It's very goldy brown. But, you know, it's not. I think that looks better. All right. So I got that. I also, Steph from Pam and Steph from Just Keep Stitching mentioned Needle Bling Pumpkin Pie. And it looks so pretty. So I found a piece of 32 count pumpkin pie. I have no idea what I'm going to do with this, but it's, it's like a very light, light orange. I don't know, but I love it. Maybe it will be a Hawkrun Hala. Who knows? But I got that because, you know, you got to have all the things, right? Yes. And I had also gotten, I don't know if I showed you, but I had also gotten some fabric at Joann's. Maybe I did show you for, um, to make a couple bags. I got Valentine's Day. And then this is the green that I'm going to put with it. And I got bunny rabbit. Well, they're chicks, but they have bunny ears on them. And that was like the end of the bolt. So, you know, got the plaid to go with that. And honestly, that's about it for the haul. So, yeah. So... I do have a couple questions that I want to ask just because I'm curious. All right. So when you stitch, okay, like I will take my DMC and I will undo it and I will cut it and I will put it on one of my floss drops. Um, for example, like here for Hawk Run Hollow. Okay. So I have my floss drops. All right. But when it comes to something like Weeks Dye Works or Classic Color Works or, um, Gentle Arts or something like that that already come on a card. Do you take these off of these cards and put them onto a floss drop? The reason I ask is, you know, classic color works and gentle arts and color and cotton, those cards are bigger than weeks. And I don't know about you, but these little cards with that one little hole drives me nuts. So the other night when I was working on, um, the gather in and I was pulling threads off, I decided to punch another little hole. All right. Be and not over the name. I didn't punch the name out. The name is over here. But do you take these off and put them on something else? I don't know. I mean, I think that would be counterproductive because it's already carded and it's already labeled. But it these little cards are a pain in the butt. At least for me. So I'm curious to know what all of you do with especially your weeks. 
because of these smaller cards. There was another question I had. Oh, how many of you make working copies of your charts? I don't have an iPad. Um, I don't have a tablet. And of course I do have the laptop, but that doesn't necessarily mean I can scan my charts and, and whatever, and you know, zoom in on them and stuff like that. And I've thought about getting an iPad. Um, I have been resistant to Apple products. I do have an iPod, but I just didn't want to lock myself into Apple products because, you know, it's like I, I'm working at school. We do a lot with Google and PCs. We don't have Apple. And my laptop is, is a PC. It's on, you know, it's a Windows platform. And of course now, since we went virtual and then went back, a lot of what I do is in Google Drive. So I don't know how practical it would be for me to get a iPad for my charts and putting them into something like good notes or something like that. Um, I know some people, I don't know what program it is, but some people use a program where you can highlight what stitches you've stitched and you can keep track of things like that. I know good notes is very popular as far as scanning charts into, um, so I'm curious to know what you all do. Are you, you know, paper all the way, paper charts all the way? Um, are you a combination paper chart, you know, electronic chart person? If you are a, you know, electronic chart person, what device do you use? And what program do you use? So, you know, like I said, I'm just curious. Um, my daughter, my oldest daughter would love if I just got the iPad and a, and a MacBook and, you know, went totally Apple. But, um, I, I can't justify doing both. So yeah, cause even my phone, I don't even know where it went. Even my phone is, um, it's a Google pixel and I love it. I absolutely love it. But I'm not a big technical person. Um, so I don't, I don't want to have to, I don't want a big learning curve, if you know what I mean. So what do you do with your, your fancy floss drops? And, um, how do you, how do you do your charts? Okay. And if you're electronic, what program do you use? Do you use Pattern Keeper? Do you use GoodNotes? What do you use? And if you are a PC person and you do it electronically, let me know what program you use. I'd really appreciate it. So, um, what are my plans? My plans are just to keep plugging away. Excuse me. It is Friday. Um, we are halfway through the third marking period. Believe it or not, we're on the downside of the ha the second half of the third marking period. Um, it ends at the end of the month. I think some of the kids are in, you know, denial um, that the marking period ends in three weeks. And then we get into the last marking period. Um, a little bit of time in that marking period is going to be the standardized tests. And... Um, some of them are already asking, you know, after the tests are done, do we just get time? And I said, no, there's still things we have to do. Um, but, you know, the school year is starting to wind down. And no, I don't know if I'm going to retire. Um, I don't know. It's going to come down to can I make it until I'm 62? Um, because if I go to 62, I won't get a penalty as far as my retirement is concerned. And, um, I don't want to be one of those that waits until the last minute and says, you know, oh, okay, see you later. Bye. I'm going to retire. I don't think that's fair to the administration or to the kids. Um, and I know some people say, well, you got to do what's right for you. 
I understand that. But I've always been taught to think of others at the same time. You know, how are my actions going to impact the other people? Um, you know, I'd, I'd have to think about my, my students. I'd have to think about the people I work with on our team. You know, the administrators, we finally have administrators that are doing the job, at, you know, that are trying to communicate with us and who are holding the kids accountable for their actions, um, good or bad. Um, so, you know, there's a part of me that doesn't really want to leave early, but who knows? So, um, yeah, I do want to mention a new floss tuber I found. Her name is Lisa. She is Canadian. Um, and her channel is called Lost in Stitches. She is a very sweet lady, young lady, and her floss tube was wonderful. I love her accent. Um, so if you have a chance, go check her out. I know she has at least one or two uh, floss tubes up. So that was Lisa at Lost in Stitches, and I'll link her down below. With that being said, um, I think that's about it. I know it's short. Um, honestly, I, I don't want to make them really long. I, I can't see. I have a hard time sitting in front of a video that's more than an hour or so long. Um, I've watched, I've looked through, you know, videos that are an hour and a half long. I have, you know, played videos in the background when I was sewing that are more than that. But, um, I'm sure you have other things to do besides listen to me. So that's it. I need to put all this stuff back where it belongs and get a little order in my life and get ready for the boys to come home and it's pizza night. So they're bringing home pizza or whatever they pick up. Um, so yeah, that's about where we are. So if you, um, you know, follow me on Instagram at the disorderly stitcher. I have the link below. Um, check out my Facebook group. Um, at, you know, the disorderly stitcher on Facebook. If you need to get in touch with me at all, please use the email that's, that's listed below and I will get back to you as soon as I can. Um, check out Lisa at Lost in Stitches and um, yeah, enjoy all the things. I forgot about the M&Ms. Peanut butter M&M's. They're Moorish. I love M&M's. Um, they love me. So yeah. So I was, I was munching on a couple M&M's when I was starting to make this video. That's why the M&M's got in the title. All right. Take care of yourselves. Stitch all the things. Enjoy getting into spring and take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. Be kind. Be patient. Be good. All right. Take care. Bye-bye.